Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. My last video was introducing my 2023 budgeting project. So I am doing a no buy year in 2023 for certain categories and other things are coming out of my £250 a month budget. The last few videos have been outlining my no buy year, my budgeting project and today's video is the first check-in for my budgeting side of the project. This is my January money diary. I'm aware it's nearly the end of February at this point but it is what it is. There was a lot of videos to put up to explain and outline things before we could get into the check-ins. So here we are, a little bit late, but let's get on into it. So I will go through it category by category. And the first category that comes out of my budget is beauty services. And I spent £35 in the month of January getting my nails done. As you can see, I've just got plain nails at the moment. Then actually I'm getting them done this week because they're now really grown up and needing done again. But with my nails, you pay for nail art. So I do like getting the nail art, but it obviously drives the price up. So that was one kind of change that I made this month is that I just got plain nails because it takes the price down. So I am, I'm not saying that I'm never getting nail art ever again or anything like that because I do enjoy having it. I like it particularly around holidays or maybe more in the summer months or around Christmas or whatever. I feel like other times of the year I could just have plain nails so that's what I did in January and I'm intending to just get plain nails again this week to try and keep the cost down so that takes my nails from what was kind of 45 to 50 pounds a month generally last year when I was getting nail art down to 35 so a little bit of a saving made there so off to a good start. I didn't spend any money at all on beauty service replacement items or on beauty replacements in the month of January so no spends there. Socialising I spent £43.22. It was across three transactions so I spent £28.82. That was actually ordering takeaway I went round to a friend's um, just after New Year and you know I did a bit of a supermarket shop so took a couple of bits there and then we all put in for a takeaway whilst we were there so 2882 on that 440 later in the month I presume that was meeting somebody for a Starbucks or something given the price of it and then 10 pounds later in the month again so 4322 on socializing it's one of those difficult categories where I don't want to stop socializing but it's probably like the sort of 40 to 50 pounds mark is probably how much of my budget I want to be spending on that given how many things need to be coming out of my budget this year in this project. So I'm quite happy with where that was for the month of January and I'd like it to kind of stay around there if possible. But the challenge with the socialising, January's a quiet month and it's probably not there for a typical month. So if I spent what I would like to be spending averagely in a month in January, which is not an average month, which is a quiet month, because generally everybody's a bit skin in January. That maybe suggests that this is going to be a category that will be quite tough. But the whole reason I put socialising into my budget is because I am spending more money there than I can really afford to or that I really want to. So that's why it's in the budget and we're just going to have to try and muddle through it. The next category is work lunches. Definitely spent far more here than I would like to in January. So I spent £39.12 on buying lunch at work. That is something to bring down and to absolutely not be spending £40 a month buying lunch at work when I could be bringing lunch from home and not be taking the expense of that lunch from my fun budget but taking it instead from my essentials budget, from my supermarket shop, which is where it should be coming from. The only thing in my defence, if I look at the way these transactions are, and I'll be putting them up on the screen so that you guys can see them too, there's a lot at the start of the month, and that's, I think, because we were moving offices, and the original plan had been straight after Christmas, we'd just go to the new office, then it became the week after that we'd started back, then it became two weeks after, um, so there was just a little bit of upheaval, and we were kind of moving between offices, like I'd go into one office in the morning and then we'd drive over with a bunch of stuff to the other office and I'd end up going home from that office. So I wasn't very settled at the start of January and I think that's probably contributed to me buying food out and having it so that I had stuff in both offices and whatever. So hopefully that will go down without being too much of a struggle to bring it down over the next few months. Then on experiences, I spent quite a lot of money on experiences. I spent £109.65. The way this has worked, I have taken this out of my budget 
as I have paid for it. So I've got one transaction of 46.66, one transaction of 40 pounds and 50 pence, and one transaction of 22.49. Now the 22.49, I went with my friend Lindsay to see The Crucible through one of the NT live showings in the cinema, so it was 22.49 for the ticket to that. So I paid that on the day and I saw that that day. However, Lindsay and I are going to Dublin in, well actually next week, but for January's purposes, in the following month from the January budget. So the 4666 is the Ryanair return flight that we have booked and the £40.50 for me is I am going to see the Peaky Blinders dance show in Edinburgh at the start of March. So that was me buying my ticket for that. So I feel like that's kind of a strange one in that there's been a lot of expenditure in that in the month of January but I've not actually I've been paying it in January to experience it in the future. So I feel like quite a lot of money's gone there when I'm not really feeling the benefit yet of that money having gone there, but it'll be really good come March when I've got my ticket and I get to go see that and it's been paid and taken out of my budget back in January. On books and entertainment, I spent £19.99. I am really, really pleased with that and actually this was a very early indication of the budget working because Waterstones had their January sale on and I had like eight books in my basket and whittled it down and whittled it down and the two books that I bought were Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan which was £8.99 and Fairy Tale by Stephen King which was £11 so that was a total of two books for £19.99. I wrote them down because I want to track when I am buying homewares or books or beauty replacements when I'm buying physical things from my budget I'm keeping a list of exactly what those things are so that I can return to them. And for the books, I feel like just simply going through the act of creating that list and putting the two of them on it, it stopped me going back and doing another transaction or another. I actually bought those books in the shop, but it stopped me checking out online with more books just because they were on sale because I haven't yet read both of those books. But I think like putting them on that list has really kind of solidified that I bought them in a way that it wouldn't have solidified I'd bought them if I just bought them and then put them on my bookshelf. So I feel like having the budget and having that list, I feel like it's putting me off making any more purchases of books until I actually read both of those books and sort of justified both of those purchases in a sense. And also having the budget and being constricted with money also contributed to me not doing another checkout because I very easily could have, particularly as it was getting to the end of January and we were getting those emails being like, last few days of sale and whatever. But at that point, because I spent quite a lot of money on the experiences, booking my flights, booking my ticket for the um, show in Edinburgh, my budget was dwindling and I wanted more books, but I had A, the sort of proof that I'd bought to already that I hadn't yet read. So it was like, the motivation was there to read them before I buy any more because they were on a list rather than just existing in my house and having kind of entered the ether of my space and disappearing into it and also I was running out of money in the budget so the budget definitely had an effect on that books category if I hadn't been budgeting I would have definitely spent a lot more on books in the month of January and it's one of those ones I feel like books are Something I have maybe been guilty of giving myself a free pass on in the past because books are good for you in a sense. It's almost like spending your money on mind vegetables. Do you know what I mean? Like you enrich your life by reading. So I feel like it's something I want to encourage and I kind of therefore almost don't want to financially constrain it. But as anybody who is into books I'm sure will know, we can sometimes all be a bit guilty of buying more books than we're actually reading. You know, the fact I've bought two last month and still haven't yet read them but would have been buying more, was it not for the budget, is like the hard, you know, evidence of that. It's probably a good thing to pull it into the budget and to be a bit more mindful around the money that I'm spending, even if it is on books, even though spending it on books is definitely a better use of it than spending it on makeup or on buying lunch at work or whatever. I'd rather the money went on books, but also I don't want to mindlessly be buying books and not reading them. That's why they are in the budget this year. The last category is homewares and stationery and I actually didn't spend anything on homewares or stationery in the month of January. That has been a struggle, maybe not so much January actually, but paper chase is closing down as I'm sure lots of you will know if you're in the UK. So they've got money off things at the moment and that's something I'm struggling with majorly at the moment. But that is for my February check-in, I suppose. In total, my budget spend in January was 
£246.98. My budget was £250, it was the first month of the year, so my opening was a very round £250. So that means I am rolling £3.02 over into February and opening my February budget with £253.02 to spend. The only other thing to kind of remark on about January is that I did not get my hair done in January. Got it done quite close before Christmas. But I got it done at the start of February, but I'm also getting it done in March before I go away. And I've now got a work conference at the end of April that I'm going to want my hair done for ahead of that conference. So I think it'll be May again before I get a month where I'm not getting my hair done. And that's quite a big chunk of the budget. So that was something I was actually trying to cut back on before I started dyeing my hair at home it didn't end well. It's not something I want to take in house as such but that's something I'm a little bit worried about for the next few months is that that's a big chunk of my budget each month getting my hair done and um, so that's kind of playing on my mind at the moment. The other thing I'm slightly worried about is because I have decided experiences have to come from my budget this year I've taken the flight money for Dublin obviously from my January budget which we've just gone through but I need to pay my hotel when we arrive. I've booked through booking.com so we'll pay the hotel when we get to Dublin next week. So I know I've got, I'm not out of my February budget already but I know between getting my nails done this week and paying that hotel never mind what I actually spend in Dublin I'm going to be over my budget in February. So I can I can call that now. I know that that's going to happen. As I said in the intro to my budgeting project, I am trying to hold it flexibly enough that if I go over my budget one month, which I'm going to do in February, I can pull it back hopefully in March and not become completely disgruntled with the whole project because overall, although I'm trying to stick within the monthly budget and not spend the next month's money before it's released, if I can make sure that over the year it averages out to being under the budget or on budget like I'll be okay with that so I know February is going to be over so I know I need to be pulling it back in March but I'm also aware in March that I am getting my hair done and I'll be getting my nails done I'll probably go for nail art because I'm going on a Disney holiday and it's fun to get Disney nail art ahead of that and also just like actual socializing and seeing people and expenses that I can't kind of just opt out of in a sense you know like I can choose not to buy any books for a month but it's a bit anti-social to be like no guys I'm not going to socialize with you for a month because of my budget so I'm a little bit worried at the moment if you watched last week's video which was my intro to budgeting we all know I struggle with this I am not good at budgeting that's why I'm doing this this year as this project it's why I'm checking in with you guys is to keep me accountable make sure I don't get completely scunnered with it as we might say in Scotland and throw it out the window. I need to keep going with it but I am I'm already a bit worried. We're, we're at the start essentially we're in month two having just done the check-in for month one and in terms of a sort of real-time check-in of where I am I am worried already but it is what it is so Fingers crossed, I will check in with you once February is done about what those official numbers have been. It is going to be over, but we just need to try and pull it back in March and maybe be pulling it back in April as well. See how, how much we can manage to pull back in March. But I am a bit nervous about it, so that's where my headspace is at with the budget. Hopefully that hasn't been too negative for you to end on. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!